Welcome back to Unit 6 of Week 1. In today's session you will learn how to adjust migration objects provided by SAP using the Migration Object Modeler. I will add a customer view and an additional field to the bank migration object. You will also learn how to copy, delete and reset a migration object and what happens with your enhancements if SAP updates the delivered content. We are still talking about the approach migrate data using staging tables. There are different ways to work with the migration object in your migration project when you use the migration object modeler. The first possibility is to adjust a template migration object to your needs, for example, create a custom view or add an additional field. The second way is to copy a migration object and adapt it to your needs. If you have specific requirements that are not covered by the migration objects delivered by SAP, or if you have customer objects which you want to transfer to the SAP S4HANA system, you can create own objects. I will show you this third option in detail in Unit six, uh, 7. In Unit 7, sorry. <laughs> Let's have a deeper look at the migration objects which are delivered by SAP. If you add a migration object in the SAP S4HANA Migration Cockpit Fiori app, the migration object is classified as template migration object and the linkage to the delivered SAP content is still available. It is also useful to know that you cannot make changes to the delivered fields, for example, change the length of a character field, but you can add additional fields. These fields will be marked as custom fields. If there is an update available on the delivered content, you will get the information and can then choose to update the migration object. You also have the possibility to ignore the content update. Note that if you choose this option, the system will permanently ignore content updates for this migration object in your project and it is treated as a custom migration object. As soon as you start to adjust the delivered migration objects, please take care that SAP only supports content issues based on the original template. You can find more information in the mentioned SAP node. In our demo, I will add the field post office bank current account number, which is currently not part of the standard content, to my migration object, as I want to fill this field with, with data in my example. You can see that this field is available in the target structure bank address. In addition, I will add a custom view to the bank migration object and hide fields bank branch and bank group as I do not need to fill these fields with data. Let's switch to the demo. I'm in the migration object modeler and I have selected the bank migration object in the demo staging project. You can see that the source structure for the bank migration object is listed on the right hand side. I'm already in the change mode. You can see the staging table information here on this side. And you can see even if I'm in the change mode, I cannot do any changes to the character or the length of the delivered um, fields. But what I can do, I can add an additional field. So I add an additional field. You see that it starts with ZZ. I give it a name, post of a post bank. I enter the character type, char. I enter the length, 16. And I give it a description, post office current number 
Um, I save my changes. I hide this column just that you see everything on one screen and I make that a little bit smaller. And now you can see on one screen that um, for this newly added field, you can see it's a custom field and I can do changes for this field. Um, besides adding um, a field, I want to also create a custom view. So I want to change the view. Let's right click on the bank master and go to the view section. You can see here the view for the on-premise um, system and the view for the cloud system. And what you can see for specific fields, you can you have three possibilities. You can classify them at not visible, then they are not uh, shown in the Excel template and the staging tables. You can classify a field as visible, then it's uh, shown and you can also classify it as required. That means um, it's a mandatory field. Um, at least one field needs to be visible if a structure is visible and at least one field needs to be required if a structure is required. Um, if you want to change the view delivered by SAP, we, we recommend that you create a custom view. So I do that. I create a custom view. And per default, um, all key fields are marked as required and all the other fields are marked as visible. What I do, I um, make the branch uh, to not visible and I also make the bank group to not visible. I save my changes and I go back to the object browser. And what you need to do in addition, you need to go to the migration object details screen. So I double click on the bank, um, the migration object, and you can see the type is still template migration object. You see it has been modified because an additional field has been added. And if you want to um, have your custom view taken, you, you need to change the active view to custom scope. So I will do that and um, if, if that's the only thing you do, don't forget to generate uh, the runtime object because then um, the new view will be taken uh, into account. Um, but I'm not finished yet, so I will uh, do another step before I generate my program. I have added a field and now I want to maintain the field mapping. So I click to the field mapping section. I'm in the field mapping section and what you can do, uh, you can see that the post office current account number has not been mapped yet. Um, and you see that the target field is also not mapped. So I chain, uh, I take drag and drop the source structure field to the target structure field and this will result in a simple move operation and that means the value from the source field is taken uh, for the target field. I save my settings and I now generate the runtime object. So you see there is no um, error messages. It's green, it's generated. And what I can do now, I can download the file. And let's have a look at the file. So I open it. You can see it looks pretty similar as a normal template migration object. You have the introduction, the fields, and now let's have a look at the bank master data. Let's go at the end and there we will see our post office current number um, field and you can see there is no branch or um, group bank group field available. 
Let's also switch to the Fiori application to have a look at the project. So I'm in the project now. I can have a look at the table. Um, so I have a look at the staging table. And you can see the new field is available in the staging table. Let's switch back to the presentation. So I've already mentioned in former unit that SAP updates migration objects from time to time. If a migration object must be updated, the system will prompt you to do so. Any rule created at migration object level will be deleted. Mapping operations or rule assignments that use rules which were created on sub-project level will not be affected. As of SAP S4HANA 2021, some custom enhancements will be restored after the update. We will come to this in more detail in a minute. All other modifications are not considered and you should save them. If required, you can ignore content updates for a migration object. In the dialog box, that prompts you to update the content of a migration object. You can choose the option Ignore Content Update. Note that if you choose this option, the system will permanently ignore content updates for this migration object. The migration object is treated as a user-defined migration object. If you want to enable the content updates again for this migration object, you can reset the migration object. One additional comment, if you want to decouple your migration object permanently from content updates, you should copy all includes to the customer namespace and assign this custom includes. As mentioned, some changes will be restored if um, uh, a migration object was adjusted and an update from SAP is available. So as of SAP S4HANA 2021, adding a field to an existing source structure will be restored. Same applies if you assign a field-based rule to a target field or an event which has not been supplied by a rule from SAP yet. Be aware that any rule created at migration object level will be deleted. We therefore recommend creating own rules on sub-project level. They can be used by all migration objects in the project and if a migration object is updated, the rule assignments are not affected. With the future release, we will also restore new created structures. To better understand the restore of custom enhancements, I have an example for you. Uh, you have added a set field to the source structure and you have mapped this field to target structure field 5 with a move operation. Before the update, it looks as in the table. You have the field mapping set field with the move operation to the target field 5. After the update, your extension is still available. So what happens if SAP updates the migration object with a new rule for exactly this target field? In this unlikely case, your field mapping will be lost and replaced by the standard content. As you can see in the second table. The set field is no not used anymore in the field mapping, but it is still available in the staging table. And if needed, you can adjust the field mapping again, but then you need to decouple your migration object by choosing ignore content update so that it is treated as a custom migration object. You can copy a migration object from another client or another project. The migration object type so if it's a template migration object or a custom migration object, will stay the same. It is possible to copy a migration object from projects created in other releases. In this case, the link to the template is not available anymore. So we recommend to always use the content of the current release for your project 
as you will not have the latest content updates available in copied migration objects. If you copy a migration object within a project, please be aware that a dedicated template migration object can only be available once in a project. If you copy it more than one time or if it's already available in the project, it will be treated as a user-defined migration object. You can delete a migration object from your project. This can only be done in the migration object model, modeler, not in the Fury UI. In the staging table, if the staging tables are filled with data, the migration object cannot be deleted. If you want to revert to your migration object to its original template, you can reset a migration object. Any changes done will be lost. As a summary, I also added a comparison slide with the differences between the migration type template migration object and user-defined migration object, which you can check. Uh, you can see in which case a migration object is classified as template migration object. This is the case if you add it in the Fiori app to your project or if you use the function create from template in transaction LTMOM. For this type, content updates are possible. You can add new fields, but you cannot change existing fields. It can only be available once in a project for a dedicated migration object. In contrary, user-defined migration objects can be available more than once in a project with a different name and changes are possible to all fields. A migration object is classified as user-defined migration object if you create it from scratch, if you ignore content updates, or if you copy a template migration object more than once within a project. There is also a click-through tutorial available. I added the link here. So this ends Unit 6. You have learned that a template migration object can be available in a project only once. If SAP updates a migration object, you can ignore the content update, but the migration object is then treated as a user-defined migration object. In our next unit, you will learn how to create an own migration object. I hope you enjoyed this session. See you in our next unit.